So what we're looking at today is called a uh, UR Sniff Trojan, and it's a multifaceted Trojan that uh, can install a bunch of stuff like spyware, backdoors, and uh, basically data stealing software, uh, banking software, stuff like that. It comes to us in the form of a JavaScript file. Um, it's important to note that this JavaScript file isn't included in an HTML page. It is uh, sent through email. So it would uh, just have an enticing name and have a .js extension, hoping for the user to click on it. And here we see it's quite an obfuscated JavaScript file. Um, we can use the Notepad++ tool, uh, JS tool, to format it for us, but it won't deobfuscate. And it's important to format the file before debugging it here through WScript, because that will allow you later to place breakpoints. So we open the file with WScript uh, forward slash forward slash x and the file name, and that allows us to launch our just-in-time debugger. What we do is look for variables towards the end of the script and just place breakpoints on them. And we're going to go ahead and step once into the script and then continue to let it run almost to completion. Once it's there, we can go ahead and inspect the local variables. It does take a second. But once the variables are populated, we can go ahead and step once again. And then we see that the script is about to download a file to our temp directory. So we can go ahead and go in there. And we're just making some room so it'll be easier to see the executable when it's downloaded. So we step once again. Check our folder. Nothing there. So we'll go back to the script and step once again. And there's our executable. So what we'll do is go ahead and cut that out of the temp directory and put it on our desktop or somewhere else so that the JavaScript file can't launch it. And then we'll go back to our script file and just step again. Well, first we'll, we'll place a dummy file, in this case, uh, command.exe. We'll go ahead and place that in the temp directory and rename it to the file that it just downloaded, just to see what it does and make sure that it actually launches it. So here we just copy the name. And then step again. one last time. And we see that the script has exited and our uh, fake file is running. In this case it's just a command prompt. But if we inspect the properties of it, we go into the windows and we see that it launched it with the hidden attribute. So we turn it visible and now we can see it in our taskbar and this is it. Um, not really necessary to do the uh, decoy file and everything, but it does help if it launched it with a particular command or um, an argument of some sort. It may show up in the command prompt. In this case, it didn't. So 
So now we'll throw the executable into PE Studio. You see that there are quite a few virus sets on the executable. Um, the four UR, or, uh, UR sniff Trojan. Um, I believe there's a new com campaign going on with that Trojan. It's called Dreambot. And it does the same thing, uses the same uh, command and control servers, etc. Here we just look for strings, not a whole lot in there. Um, some encrypt file stuff, uh, but not a whole lot of not a whole lot of strings. So that usually indicates that the file is either packed or obfuscated in some way. And in our case, um, it's not really packed; it's more obfuscated. There's a lot of uh, deobfuscation routines for strings and more data that's within the file. So here we just try and run the executable in a sandbox and this particular Trojan has a unique uh, anti-sandbox technique that it employs. And we're going to show that to you now. So launching it in sandboxy. And just double checking uh, fake nets configuration here. So now launch it again, sandboxy. Um, what we'll notice is that uh, it spins for quite a long time and doesn't really do anything. Um, just sits and spins and spins and spins. Um, what should happen is it should launch another process and start beaconing out. In our case here, uh, it stays on the original executable in an infinite loop. and. Uh, fake net, that's a lot of other data that's going on, uh, nothing from the implant itself. Uh, the actual communications will be coming from uh, service host.exe, and right now we're still on the original executable. So if we go into our debugger, which is also uh, run through sandboxy, uh, just to make sure it's in the same process environment. What we'll do is go ahead and attach to the program and pause execution. And normally that'll leave you in uh, kernel land somewhere in TDLL, kernel 32, somewhere like that. So what we want to do is continue execution till return and then step once. And we're going to keep doing that until we come back to user code. And the point of this is to get back to uh, UR sniff Trojan user code to see where the file is hung up at. So here we're stepping, going to return, again to return. More returns. And now we're back in user code. So here we're just stepping through. There's the main comparison that we uh, that we look for. And this is what causes it to go in an infinite loop. Here we'll just show the, the graph really quick. Um, we'll show this again here in just a second in Ida Pro so you can see it a little bit better. But this is the infinite loop graph that will uh, continually go in a circle and look for a non-existent window and count how many windows it checks that against. By checking for a non-existent window and counting how many times it looks for that window, the malware is essentially counting how many processes are running and if it's not over a certain amount it'll continue in an infinite loop and never continue execution 
So that's particularly important in sandboxes because normally there's not a lot of programs running, maybe three or four, whereas a legitimate system would have thousands to include um, tasks and uh, DLLs, uh, system resources, user programs, etc. So here we find the uh, loop. And what we're going to do is take the offset of that loop and find it in the binary file on disk. And I actually went one instruction too many. Uh, it's actually up at the jump not zero that we want to patch. And that's what we're doing here, is we're going to calculate the offset into the binary file, find the jump not zero instruction, and just knop it out with uh, hex 90s. And what that'll do is bypass the condition entirely and just allow the program, no matter how many windows it counted, to continue execution like normal. So we'll go ahead and stop the executable that was running. Rename the file so we don't get confused. And now we have our patched file that we can run in dynamic analysis. Now what your sniff will do is go ahead and deobfuscate some more code after the anti-analysis stuff and it will inject it within a new process space within itself so it'll self-inject uh, and execution continues in that new injected space and that new injected space will also launch service host.exe in a suspended state and inject more code into service host and then continue uh, resume execution of service host and what that allows the Trojan to do is run code in the context of service host.exe which gives it greater leverage within the operating system, so a, a better security context to run under. And here we start to see the service host.exe calling out to its command and control servers, and I'll uh, widen command prompt here to uh, show that a little better. Here we see the long git requests with uh, git slash images and a bunch of random characters all the way out to a random file name dot avi. And that is the signature uh, command and control callout, sort of a check-in for the UR sniff and uh, DreamBot Trojans. So I hope that was informative. Um, a little bit how to debug some JavaScript files that aren't used in HTML. They're actually launched through the Windows W script and how to find some anti-analysis tricks and patch them. If you have any questions on this analysis or any other of our analysis on YouTube, go ahead and check us out on ringzerolabs.com and send us an email and we'll get back to you with any kind of questions you have on this malware, any other malware, or just how to get into malware analysis in general.